Well, thanks for coming today. We're going to talk about a, a chart pattern that, uh, you know, I was, I was talking about in the trade room today that this is a chart pattern that we've been trading since 2009. And it occurred to me to kind of look and see what are some of the other chart patterns out there and is what we're doing considered a particular chart pattern that everybody knows about. And I'm going to go through kind of how we developed all of this uh, through this event. But um, so I started looking and there's nothing. There's nothing. It's a completely ignored chart pattern that we picked up back in 2009. We noticed this chart pattern. And uh, so then we developed the system around this pattern and then just moved on. We didn't talk about it. We didn't tell anybody else about it other than just, uh, uh, you know, kind of letting people know how we trade the pattern. But we haven't just talked about the pattern itself and why it's so important. Okay. Yeah, it's even in our logo. So this is a, a regular disclaimer. Don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. Most people lose money at trading, so that means you probably will too. This is all for educational purposes only. We don't make any promises that you'll be successful at day trading. Pattern. This is it. The simple pattern. So if you focus your efforts on this one pattern, you'll go further with your trading then if you continue to try everything out there that comes at you, and I was the worst at that, I would go out and I everything I read but way back then, it was mostly like trading forums uh, and uh, there was YouTube and uh, YouTube videos and everything I would read, uh, just everything. I would try it and I would throw it at a chart. And boy, was I naive at, at the type of things that people would talk about online they that that at they want you to believe that what they're saying is the gospel truth you know and and it makes sense and so we all want to believe it but this one pattern is so important like I said like like he said look at our logo look at this logo right here it's so important in our trading. This pattern is our logo in pullback trading. This is what we do. This is what we see every day. All right. And, of course, it can go the other way. You know, it, it doesn't have to just go up. It can go down. Or it could appear to be not particularly well defined. But once you get used to what you're looking at, once you get used to the you know the way price moves then you'll see the pattern almost automatically without having to study it and you'll see it develop okay now patterns <clears throat> i'm assuming many of you are interested in uh in chart patterns or have had an interest in chart patterns in the past and if you spend any time with day trading, you're going to spend some time trying to trade chart patterns, right? I think we've all done the double tops and the double bottoms and the head and shoulders. And we're trying to figure out how do we get into these trades? How do I trade these chart patterns that look so good and everybody talks about them and everybody prints something on their blog or on their website or in there's books and books about chart patterns so there must be something to them right has anybody here successfully traded chart patterns and and, and made it a major part of their trading has chart patterns been something that you could count on probably not But you've tried them, right? So here's the thing. Candlestick patterns are not real good <clears throat> predictors of price movement. Okay? Well, they are. They actually are. Unless they're not. Right? Right, Chris? They look great 
in hindsight. That's how you know for a fact that a chart pattern worked is in hindsight. But if you look at static historical charts and you start scrolling back and you're looking for patterns, <clears throat> you're going to miss, you won't even see the patterns that didn't work because they're no longer there. They disappeared in the clutter. So the, the ones that worked will jump out at you. The ones that failed, they just kind of disappear into the mist of the day trading world, okay? So they represent a probability of a certain outcome, but not a certainty, okay? <clears throat> the markets are too influenced by lots of factors, including the news and trader sentiment and economic reports and global events and that, you know, stuff like that, that cat that chart patterns alone, there's the key, alone, <clears throat> can't capture. So if you're relying, try to rely solely on them, you're going to be sorely disappointed. If you've ever tried, you notice there's a high risk of false or failing signals, okay? Especially in real volatile or choppy markets. So the market conditions can, can change rapidly, particularly in this day and age of trading. And what appears to be a strong signal ends up petering out, ends up failing. And you had just jumped into this perfect, what, what a great looking pattern, and then it, nothing happens. And, and then it goes the opposite way, and of course we all get beat up. So that was my experience with chart patterns, and I think uh, most people I've talked to. Yet, here I am today talking to you about a chart pattern. So, must be something a little different. There's no context without market structure when you see a chart pattern. It's just a bunch of, of candlesticks, right? They A lot of times they'll provide better signals when they're analyzed in the context of market structure. That's important, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, we're going to talk about, or Saturday, we're going to talk about support and resistance levels, trends, price action, volume. We're going to have a whole big training session on, on trading this pattern on Saturday. <clears throat> but if you don't incorporate those elements, the patterns just don't ha really have much value. Very limited. They're very misleading. Um, easy to be misinterpreted. Now, a lot of us are so anxious to see chart patterns and to trade and to get into a trade that we'll just kind of make them up. You know, we want to we we're going to we're going to use confirmation bias and we'll see what we want to see and get into trades that we shouldn't probably shouldn't have gotten into but we were so anxious and excited oh is this a is this a head and shoulders oh my gosh look at this oh i'm just going to jump in here because i think it's setting up and i want to get it in as early as possible all right problem with that is most of them are lagging in nature and by the time you've noticed that you have a chart pattern it it's mostly over whatever move you were going to make is it's probably done by now. So, you know, the, their, the order placement for a chart pattern is also often a suboptimal uh, position. Lower time frames don't typically do real well with, with chart patterns because of what a lot of people call noise. To me, noise is the retail traders, the little guys that really don't know what they're doing and they make price just kind of bounce around and they're with no real rhyme or reason. It's just, you know, you know, these guys, you know, these people, right. That just jump into the market without really knowing what they're doing. Well, that does cause price to move. So that can be kind of some noise. So, uh, so the patterns have to develop over a slower period of time because of what 
a lot of people call market noise or retail traders that don't know what the heck they're doing. Um, kind of like playing blackjack with somebody who doesn't know how to play blackjack and they keep hitting on, you know, <laughs> had a guy, oh my gosh, this is really funny. To, uh, like three months ago, I was in Vegas. He split tens. Never seen anybody ever do that. He split tens. Anyway, I got up and left. <clears throat> so lower time frames are typically not the best for a typical chart patterns. So these alg algo driven markets. So we all know about these guys, right? The HFTs, the guys that have all the money and all the main big computers that can uh, put in all these big trades. And in today's market, a significant portion of trading is done by these algos, okay? These algorithms can <clears throat> often recognize these popular candlestick patterns and exploit the traders that are acting predictably based on these patterns. So, for example, a, a, an algo might trigger a false breakout just to take advantage of the stops that were placed on uh, on an expected move based on a chart pattern. Okay, so these guys know that people look at these. Market complexity. Okay. What about the 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 financial markets, you know, are complex systems and they're influenced by a lot of things, the macroeconomic data, the geopolitical stuff, the interest rates, the, uh, you know, a lot of other factors uh, that factor in the candlestick patterns really can't be accounted for. Um, so they're, they're just representations of past price behavior, okay? They don't particularly tell us that something in the future is going to act a certain way. It only tells us that in the past, this is what happens sometimes. Okay? So if you're solely relying on chart patterns, you're probably not going to do that well. Okay? And there's a lot of better alternatives out there. You know, there's, there's uh, technical analysis indicators, um, there's volume analysis, there's price action analysis, risk management, um, position size. There's, there's a lot of better alternatives out there, okay? So now I'm going to tell you you need to be trading a chart pattern. After all that, I'm going to tell you, but I'm going to show you why. All right. So if you look at this chart, very typical chart on any given day, any particular instrument, just a chart, but look, there's the pattern. Look, there's the pattern. There it is again. There it is again. And it just keeps repeating. When we're done here today, or when you're done watching this video, pull up a chart. Now, this is a one-minute chart. Okay? So we're not as worried about noise. Pull up a chart. See if you don't see this pattern repeated over and over and over again. Where it, it, you can exploit it in many different places. There's even some bonus trades here that aren't exactly part of a pattern, but they do generate trades. Now that we know what we're looking for when we're, when we're trading that pattern, we've picked up some bonus trades from that where we don't even need part of the pattern, all right? So what's happening here? What, what exactly are we seeing here? So in short, <clears throat> price is climbing and we see areas where price might be in a, in a channel during the climb, okay? So um, we're channeling here. We got a, a little bit of a climb, a little bit of a channel here, a little bit of a climb, a little bit of a channel here. And then, so we've, we have an established trend, right? And just like everybody else, our expectation is that a, a trend is going to continue. But as price is climbing, we, we then suddenly, and this is often as a result of an algo or multiple algos firing off, price starts moving much faster 
and the current bar starts getting really big, okay? And it's much bigger than, or prices moved farther than the previous bars. So right then and there, that's really easy to see. And again, I'm going to um, encourage you to go look at a chart and tell me if you don't see this over and over and over again, okay? And then price reaches a level where there are no more buyers. So price has to start dropping at that point. There's nobody else to push it up, okay? In a nutshell, that's, what, that's the opportunity that we have recognized and that we've been exploiting since 2009. So now if trading was all about regular hindsight patterns, you know, or, or hindsight, you know, looking at patterns in hindsight, <clears throat> that would be awesome, wouldn't it? If, if we could trade in hindsight. But how do we know if potentially this pattern is developing and that we need to be ready for a trade setup? You know, here's the pattern. We have down here prices kind of in a channel and we have some small bars. This channel kind of goes right across here. So at one point, this bar breaks out of that channel and then starts climbing really fast. Okay? So that's, that's what we're watching. But it, to help us to identify when this potential setup is an actual setup based on this this pattern we use a very sophisticated set of indicators that are extremely high performance and what i mean by that is we're counting and measuring the rate at which every single tick comes into every single bar now that's what we're doing in the background. We, meaning the intentional trader. You as a trader, you don't have to be sophisticated. We've done the, all the hard work. We've done all the heavy lifting. These are really easy to use indicators. We call them heads up display indicators because you don't need to look anywhere else except right at the chart in front of you. We don't use any other charts, no other tools, no other time frames to make trade decisions. What you see right there is basically a chart that we would be using in the trade room to make a trade decisions. Each indicator will tell us when a particular condition exists. Okay? And the more conditions that exist that are conducive to price stopping right, being forced to stop and being forced to change direction, the more of those indicators we have, the higher probability trade setup that we have. Okay, so that's what we're looking for, and that's why we use our heads-up display indicators so they don't just sneak up on us and that we have to try to, you know, if you're trying to, to trade uh, chart patterns, you, you're kind of guessing, you're, you're at a point where you're guessing, all right? So this is a typical chart for us in the trade room. There are three trade setups on this chart, okay? There's three winning trade setups on this chart. Now, this Saturday, the 19th at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, I'm going to show you how to use these indicators to trade this pattern. This is all we do. This is what we've been doing since 2009. A lot of people make their living doing this. Okay? So we're going to, we're going to show you the pullback system, the setups, <clears throat> the indicators, and how to qualify a good setup. 
not every one of those patterns develops into a good trade setup, right? So you need to know which ones are the best trade setups. So you can go right there and you can register for that event. Um, I also pin the registration in the chat up at the top. And for those of you watching on video, it'll be down in the description uh, below. Okay. So we're going to talk about that on Saturday and we'll spend as much time as we need to on Saturday for, for you to understand. If you don't understand the pattern, how we got here, why we're doing it, what we're doing, then you just ask as many questions as you need to. Okay. Now as a bonus, we're going to talk about this new product that we have coming out. We've got this product called Ladder Trader. For those of you that have struggled with the uh, Ninja Trader Static Superdome, here is our answer to that. Notice it looks an awful lot like a Static Superdome. Well, it is a lot. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, we expect it to be released in the next week or two. It's going to be part of our essential add-on suite um, that... Uh, there's also some information on that in the chat and down in the description. So um, <clears throat> if you if you're not have not been allowed to use the Static Superdome on Ninja Trader, or you don't want to pay the fees for it or whatever, we've got a new product coming out for you. Okay, we're going to talk about that on Saturday. All right. So remember this guy. He knows that typical chart patterns don't work, and I explained why they don't. So let's look at why ours does and, and has since 2009. All right, so you remember we are talking about market dynamics, okay? So there are, there are dynamics in the market that create, automatically creates our chart pattern for us, all right? So we're going to talk about those dynamics that create the, the event that gives us an edge every single day. All right. So what are these market dynamics? Okay, so first of all, you've all heard of accumulation and distribution, right? So we've got this area where we have some congestion. It looks like there's really no interest in what's going on. And, and we're getting bored, we're falling asleep, but in actuality, the big boys are probably very quietly buying up as much as they can at this low price down here. They feel like price should be higher, so they're going to buy up as much as they can without kind of tipping their hand that this is what they're doing, okay? So we've got these areas of accumulation where the big boys are buy, are trying to corner the market on this particular asset, okay? Now, what they're going to do then is they're going to withhold selling all that they bought up. So what happens? It creates scarcity. What happens when you have scarcity? Price goes up. So they'll do that as price goes up. Then they're going to start selling off a little bit and see if they can get price to hold at this higher level. Okay? So they've now just increased the value of their holdings. Amazing how they did that. Now, we can characterize this with these bigger upthrust bars. All right? And then what they're going to do is they're going to probably do it again. They're going to say, okay, well, if it held here, that must mean we can probably push it a little higher. So let's go ahead and buy some more. Then they're going to push it up again. And you'll see that with these up thrust bars. Okay. And the markup. Now they've got, okay. We've now increased the value of our holdings by X amount, which is all we want. So now it's time for us to start taking profits. But if we do it all at once, what happens? Everybody knows, right? 
Everybody's going to jump on the bandwagon and start selling. Nope, they don't want that. So again, they're going to do it quiet. Price is going to just kind of start drifting into a channel. We're going to fall asleep. We'll be getting bored. I don't know, looking at Facebook and YouTube and whatever. But the big boys are now making their profits. This is where they make their profits is during distribution. All right, so now they're going to, they've made their money, they've made their profits. Now, they're still very large holders of this particular asset. So they can still control it. So they're finally done selling it all off. They stop, they create scarcity, price zooms up, which could be done either by retail traders or more likely algos or and other algos they do fight each other sometimes too <clears throat> so price zooms up and we get these really big bars okay we can call these climax bars we can call them blow off bars but it, you'll see them just before price stops and changes directions go look at any chart a time-based chart and you will see this happening over and over and over again. Now, something interesting also happens in here. How many of you know about momentum traders? These guys, you know, the rest of the world is saying buy low, sell high. These guys are like, no, nope, I'm going to buy high, sell higher. Right? So... What they'll do is they will see that this is taking off like this. They're going to buy it down in here and sell it right in here. They're in and out in a hurry. All right. So these momentum traders also help to push this up. And suddenly we have what? Exhaustion. This is key. We need exhaustion. You know, price will never move in one direction. It's up and down, up and down, up and down. It'll go generally up or generally down over time. But it's up and down all day long. But the longer it's moving in one direction, what happens? Price becomes exhausted. You run out of people willing to buy or sell at certain levels. So these guys that have still have a large portion of assets... Now dump them on the market and create this markdown phase. All right. Now, we don't just, I mean, we have identified more opportunities by trading this edge, by trading this pattern. We have right here on this chart, there's a couple more opportunities that present themselves to us that don't follow the typical pattern, but they will happen after a pattern. And we found that we have just as good uh, a chance at identifying yet another trade setup, and it doesn't have to follow the pattern exactly. All right, <clears throat> so they're, they're not predictive, but it signals a, the pattern signals a strong potential early, okay? There are no false signals. We, we have provided the context with showing you how market structure affects what traders are doing and what we can do to exploit it, all right? So there are no biases. You know, I, I don't have to talk myself into seeing those upthrust bars, right? Or to seeing exhaustion. I know it's there. I can, I mean, it's plain as day. I don't have to talk myself into it. No lagging. In fact, with our indicators, we get a heads up that some of the conditions that lead to good trade setups are falling into place. And now all we need is a confluence of those conditions to trigger a trade setup. All right. Now, 
This works particularly well on lower time frames, okay? Unlike the other ones that, you know, you had to worry about what they call market noise. These are, the, the algos actually enhance our ability to trade this because they kind of force exhaustion, okay? So the more algos, the better. Well, that's not true. You can have too many, and then when that happens, we just sit back and we wait until things settle down. <clears throat> so, as I mentioned, there's a lot of complexities in the market. There's a lot of influences in the market um, that can change things uh, at a moment's notice. So the longer you're in a trade, the more speculative that trade becomes. Well, we don't want to be in a trade for a long time, so we want these quick trades so we can avoid these, these, all of these influences in the market that could totally change what we thought 10 minutes ago was going to happen. And then there's no more guesswork, like with, a, like with just trying to trade regular chart patterns. We, we, our indicators take all the guesswork out. You just use our rule-based low stress, low exposure, limited emotion management, very concise rules. Um, we get multiple opportunities a day. We've got a, a, a skills building program and a, you know a bunch of uh, videos and knowledge for helping you kind of get a good handle on this and, and building your experience. And we've been doing these same trades in the same trade room since 2009, okay? Now, again, this Saturday, we're going to do a lot more. Not only did I tell you why this works and what it is, but on Saturday, we're going to tell you how to do it, all right? And we're going to talk about our new static superdome alternative we call ladder trader and for those of you here today we're going to offer you 20 percent off uh, any of our programs just use that coupon code and you can also go online and get a free one month uh, uh, trial of our essential add-on suite currently as of 17th of October, it's not quite yet available in the essential add-on suite, but it will be in the next week, or I hope not too, but I'm hoping not sometime next week, we're going to release it in our essential add-on suite. If you're doing a trial or if you get a subscription, you'll get an email that there's a new update to uh, EAS and in that update will be the ladder trader, okay? For those of you that want to give it a try. If you like it, subscribe to Essential Add-on Suite. If you don't, nothing, no, no, uh, what do they call it? no harm, no foul. All right. I'm going to spend more, more time on Saturday. And thank you, Keith, for, Keith doesn't work for me. He's just a nice guy that likes to help out. Um, more time on Saturday explaining in more detail all about uh, what we talked about today. And uh, I will take as much time if you find this interesting and you want to uh, learn more about it and maybe get involved in doing it with us and hang out with us in the trade room. We'd love to have you. I'll answer as many questions as you have.